Many of you use textbooks in your college level classes, but I'm sure that many of you, uh, you know, starting in third and fourth grade, uh, maybe even before that, were given textbooks in math and textbooks in science and social studies. Um, and then it continued that your teachers used those throughout your learning opportunities in schools. Uh, some things, though, from the teacher side that you should be looking at before you choose a textbook as the primary resource for teaching and learning uh, are listed below. So first thing is what is the grade level readability of the textbook that you have chosen? Or sometimes you don't have the opportunity to choose the textbook, but your school district has chosen it for you. The problem here is, uh, on average, textbooks are one grade level higher than the grade that they are being used in. An example of this would be a third grade science textbook is on a fourth grade readability. Um, or a fifth grade textbook is on a sixth grade readability. Uh, to me that makes no sense because if we're asking students to be successful readers and comprehend the information in the textbook, um, we're asking them to do that on a grade level above the grade they're in, you're going to have a very small population of students that can be successful with this task. Um, typically, we have more students below grade level in their reading level than we have um, above. So this is a problem and you need to look at that textbook and uh, use a formula. I'm sure you can find one online if necessary, um, but also asking your colleagues about the grade level readability of the textbook because it's a major concern to student comprehension and understanding. The second thing is we want to look at how the book is designed and organized. Does it follow a text structure that students are familiar with, or does it just follow a textbook structure? By teaching the text structures that we learned about last week in class, we can set them up for success. If you think about it, and we give them um, some informational books, and we, they know it's going to be a sequential um, text structure, or it's a descriptive text structure, or it is a cause and effect Check structure. They know what to listen for, they know how to fill out graphic organizers to uh, chart their learning, and they know how to share their information with you that they have learned. If textbooks don't follow an informational text structure that they know, they're going to have trouble uh, finding information and sharing information with you as the teacher. The third area we need to look at is how does the text relate to your student's knowledge and background. A lot of times, textbooks do not base their uh, information on uh, to match the population of student learner in your classroom. They often have a westernized view, which means it's primarily your Caucasian upper to middle class student. If that is not the student sitting in every seat in your classroom, then you're going to have a problem with your students connecting to the information in the textbook. Uh, they, textbooks have gotten a little bit better in this, but we find that when students can't connect to the information or the pictures on the page or the experiences that they're sharing, then they have a disconnect to the book and it becomes not as user friendly. Uh, related to that is how usable is the textbook? Do they know how it works and can they find information on the page? And then our next one is how interesting is the text? How many of you have read a textbook and been completely bored, had your mind wander, and never really finished the assignment? I hope that's not going on in your textbook that you're reading for our class. But we do find that sometimes textbooks are very dry, and when our interest wanes, we have trouble concentrating and focusing on the information on the page. So if you're not using a textbook that has a, 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 it does a very good job of this, then we're going to lose some of our learners. The last question we need to think about is, will my textbook be the primary source of instruction, or will I use it as an extension? And can I tie it to other literature? This might be a question that you need to ask your administration because some school districts have strict guidelines as to how the textbook should be used to match the curriculum. If you're lucky enough to be in a school district that does not require this to be your primary source, you can use the textbook as an extension or as an extra where you can use trade books and other types of literature and media to be your primary source of instruction. This way, you're giving your you're getting rid of all of the factors above a grade level readability, design and organization, uh, relating to your students' knowledge and background, uh, and making finding a text that is much more usable to your students and I'm sure will be more interesting. So before you use that textbook, these are some things you need to ask yourself or ask your administration.